Hello and welcome. This is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions. And today we're looking at a rent roll in the lease charges format and we're pulling out all time sensitive information. Specifically, we're gonna look at move-ins and lease expirations of the current resident base. This is part two of a three-part video series. If you haven't yet watched the first video that's titled Deciphering a Multifamily Rent Roll with Lease Charges, I check that out first and then come back and watch this video. It's linked below. In that video, we took a raw rent roll and we broke out all the critical data we needed to populate Tactica's value add model. This video is going to start where we left off and teach you some more crucial Excel skills to further master breaking down complex rent rolls. With the skills you learn today, you can recycle them and utilize them on any rent roll with the lease charges format. I see this layout all the time and I haven't been stumped yet or unable to efficiently organize the essential data points. If you've been enjoying Tactica's content, I'd really appreciate it. If you'd like the video, subscribe to our channel and allow us to notify you when releasing new video content. Also, if you're watching this video and think there is a better way to do something, you should share your methods in the comments below. I'm always looking to be more efficient and I'm sure other viewers are as well. With that, let's begin. There are three main time sensitive metrics you're going to come across when you're analyzing a rent roll. Move-ins, lease expiration, and lease starts. Lease starts are not included in this video. Uh, the rent roll didn't include any examples of this, but the analysis procedures are exactly the same as what I'm going to show you for the move-in data. Why do we want to look at the move-in data? First and foremost, it gives us a good feel for the recent rental trends. Are new tenants paying more than they were a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, or are they paying less? We can also go a step further and understand which unit types are performing better over certain time periods. Are one bedroom rents increasing over the past month? Are two bedroom rents decreasing over the past month? And finally, we can see which months have historically been stronger or weaker for leasing. And then we get into the lease expirations. Why is this data important? First and foremost, we wanna confirm that the bulk of lease expirations will happen during prime leasing season. If you're an owner or an investor in a, a state that has cold weather in winter, you don't wanna see a ton of leases expiring in January and February people tend to avoid moving during those months. Ideally, the bulk of lease expirations are going to be happening in the spring, summer months, and maybe even in the early fall. We also need to understand the lease expiration exposure each month and what you'd potentially need to backfill with new tenants. And finally, you need to understand the monetary exposure and how much gross rent you need to replace if you have a lease expiration and you can't get that tenant to renew or find a new tenant to take their place. As an example, let's say there's a month coming up where all of your three bedroom units are expiring. Well, typically a three bedroom unit's gonna be significantly more expensive than a studio unit. If you lose all those three bedroom renters and you cannot backfill them, that's gonna be more financially impactful than if you would have lost all of your studio renters, assuming you had the same amount of three bedroom and studio units. So we can take the lease expiration data and start to look at future exposure once you're the new owner of the property. So we're gonna take the rent roll, we're gonna extract all of these key dates, and then we're gonna create visuals that will help answer some crucial questions about what our future exposure is, and then also what's been happening in the past historically with these move-ins and how rents have been faring. As a reminder, we're starting off where we left off in last week's tutorial video. This is number two of a three-part video series, and we've already extracted some crucial data points, and we're gonna to continue to add to it and do more analysis. So what, we're, what are we looking at here? We have this green grid. This is what we pulled out of this messy, unorganized rent roll in the last video. So if we come all the way over to the right, we grabbed the units, the floor plans, and then we made a, a column that designated each unit's renovation status. And then we created a column dedicated to the general unit type. So we grouped all these individual floor plans into either one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom clusters. And then finally, we grabbed the square footage in the in-place actual leased rents. And there we created a pivot table. And this grid right here is what we would copy and paste directly into the value add model. And from there, we'd be able to continue with our pro forma analysis. Now we need to come back to the rent roll and we're gonna pull out move-in dates and lease expiration dates in columns K and L. So the first thing I want to do is just clear some space off to the right of the rent roll grid. I'm just going to add eight columns or so. And we're going to use the same process we did 
last video and we're gonna grab all of these units through unit 309 and paste them and leave two columns in between. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of these extra columns just so everything's a little bit closer together. And then I'm gonna label each column as unit, unit, and then we're gonna have moving data in column Q and lease expiration data in column T. Then I'm gonna do that same if formula and I'm gonna say if the move-in cell doesn't equal blank, then grab the move-in date. If it is blank, then leave the cell blank. Take that, I'm just gonna drag it all the way to the bottom and go ahead and center the column. And then the lease expiration, same thing. And if the lease expiration cell isn't blank, I grab the date, otherwise keep it blank. And then I'll drag that formula to the bottom as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight our new data, Control C, Control Alt V, and paste as values to kill the formulas. Now I'm going to organize the data. So I'm gonna do a, a custom sort. We're gonna expand the selection. We wanna sort by move in, and we're just gonna do it from A to Z. We'll fix this formatting later. I know it's an unintuitive date format, but let's wait till we get into the main grid so we're not wasting time formatting right now. I'm gonna do the same sort for lease expirations. We're gonna expand the selection. We're gonna sort by expiration A to Z. Now all the pertinent information is on top of these two tables. So now I'm gonna come back over to our green grid over here. This is kind of our main table. And we'll make two new headers, move in and expiration. And then I'm going to do a VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, we're gonna use the unit as our reference point. I'm gonna lock that column. I'm gonna come scroll back over to the move-ins, select all the data through unit 307. I don't need to worry about the blank cells below it. We'll lock that range. We want our formula to pull the second column, so the actual dates, so we'll put in two there and then false. Close that bracket, we'll drag that down, we're getting that error message. So the error is firing for all the units that are currently vacant. We don't want an error message, so I'm going to add an if error statement in front of this VLOOKUP. And if there's an error, then we just want it to be blank. So we'll do comma after the VLOOKUP bracket and then close the entire formula. We'll drag that down. And then I'm just gonna drag this formula, the first cell over into expirations. We're gonna scroll over and then I just need to move our two column reference grid over to columns S and T. So it grabs the expiration dates, hit enter, and then we'll drag those down as well. And then finally, let's format these as a short date. And we'll make it, make them green so they match the rest of the data we have in this table. So there's one unique step we need to take here um, and it has to do with the dates. And once we get this data into a pivot table, we're gonna wanna group this data. And one thing that's kind of weird in Excel is it's currently counting these blank cells as an entry. Let me show you what I mean. So if I start highlighting these move-in dates, you can see down below Excel is counting each entry. So it's going one and then two, three, four, five. And then when I get to this blank cell, it's going to count it because we had that, even though we copied and pasted as values, there's still a history here. There's still like a blank text string in there and Excel is counting that as a populated cell. And it's, it's going to be an issue when we get into the pivot tables, we try to group these dates and it's gonna cause an error. So we need to take care of that right now. Historically, I've always used a macro to take care of this. I have a macro that will trim cells, but I'm trying to show you how to do this without any macros. So I found an ingenious way to do this, and I'm just gonna do it on the entire on the entire grid here. So I'm gonna highlight everything within this table here, and we're gonna do a find and replace. So I'm gonna select find and replace. And what we're looking for, we're looking for blank cells and if, if Excel finds a blank cell, put an X in there. And then we'll hit next. And then we're gonna replace all. I forgot to kill the formulas in the, in the date cells. So, so, so I'm gonna do a quick Control Alt C, Control Alt V. We're gonna paste as values. And then I'm gonna do that same step 
in call in these last two columns that I did for the rest of the rent grid. Um, so we're going to do a find and replace. The replace with X is already there. We replace all. So it's going to make eight more replacements. Now I'm going to come back. I'm going to highlight the entire table here. We're going to do find and replace again. And this time we're going to look for the X's. And if they're X, we want to replace it with a blank. We're going to replace all. Now it replaces all 34 cells. So when we come back and we start highlighting the data we, the data we have in the table, it's going to go two, three, four, five. And now when we highlight that blank cell, notice it goes from five and it stays at five. That's what we want. Excel is no longer counting any blank cells as having a text string within them. So the whole find and replace was kind of a unique way to do this. I tried some other methods and they didn't work. But this is an incredibly helpful way to go about truly trimming these cells and making sure there's like no hidden formulas in there. So then the final step is we're gonna just highlight the entire table here and let's insert a pivot table and let's do that on an existing worksheet. I already started a new tab that's gonna host a couple pivot tables for our move-ins and lease expirations. We'll do that in column B. And now we can build out some cool graphics. Let's first focus on the move-in data. So I'm gonna right click in this pivot table and we want to show the field list. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag down the move-in dates into our rows argument. I don't wanna see the quarterly intel. Personally, I always just like to see the months and the years. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of that just by sliding it back up. And then I'm gonna add a data filter. I only want to see the move-ins for the last year. I feel like data that's older than a year old is, is too stale. So I'm going to cut it off at one year ago. So to do that, I'm going to do data filters and I'm going to say after, and I'm going to click on this little calendar in the upper right hand corner. And I will say after June, 2022, we're currently in June of 2023. So I'll check that, click okay. And now we can expand the year and then we have data through July of 2022, through June of 2023, perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add the rent intel as our values argument, but I don't want the sum, I want the average. So we can see how the average least rent, rent has changed month over month, but this still isn't very helpful because we don't know what's being leased. As I said earlier in the video, a three bedroom rent is gonna be significantly higher than a one bedroom rent. So ideally then we wanna organize this further by unit type. So I'm gonna put the type as our column argument and do a more apples to apples comparison for each month of move in data. So I'm gonna just move the two bedroom info off to the left of the three bedroom so it's in a more intuitive order. And then I'm gonna get rid of the subtotals. That's kind of confusing. I don't care about the average for the year that's being displayed in row four and row nine. So I'm gonna to go to design subtotals and do not show subtotals. So now we just have the average rental data each month for each unit type. So now we can create a chart if we go insert and recommended charts. I don't like the column. I'm just going to do a line chart. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to right click on any one of these gray filters and I'm going to hide all field button on the chart. I personally don't like those being displayed. And this graph right now doesn't tell us a whole lot. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in the chart, select data, I'm gonna click hidden and empty cells and I wanna connect data points with a line. Okay, that's a little better. And then you can see that on the vertical axis, the rent dips slightly below $1,000 for one bedrooms, but we have the access going all the way to zero. So just to make it, make the trends more apparent, I'm gonna format this access and I'll set the minimum as 900 and I'll set the max as 1400. And now we can look at how these different unit types have fared over the past year. It seems like there's just generally a, a, a downward rental trend, which isn't ideal. I do wanna point out that this rent roll is, is only 27 units. 
Um, there's not a lot of scale. So this, this analysis isn't nearly as insightful if say you're looking at a property with 100 units or 200 units. So just know the more units you have that you're analyzing, this is going to be a lot more beneficial, but it's cool that you can see how the different unit types have fared for when new tenants are moving into these units over the course of the year. And if you're looking at this wondering why there's no green line for that three bedroom renovated unit, if we come to the pivot table, the reason why there's only been one renovated three bedroom move in over the course of the year. Now let's do lease expiration. So I'm gonna come back to our main table here. It's already highlighted and I'm gonna insert another pivot table. I'm gonna do it on the same tab. I'm just gonna come over to the right and column K and insert the pivot table there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move the expirations back down. I'm gonna get rid of the quarters. Now with lease expirations, I only want to look into the future. I'm going to do a data filter after today. So today is June 14th, 2023. I only wanna see what's happening in the future. So now we have 2023 data, 2024 data. And I wanna know two things. I wanna know how many leases are expiring and what that equates to in gross dollars. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna grab the, the unit type and I'm gonna drag it down to value. So now it's just counting how many units are expiring each month. And then finally, I'll grab the actual in-place rent and I'll add that as my second argument. And now we can see the gross dollars that would be falling off the rent roll if the tenant doesn't renew at their lease expiration or they're unable to be backfilled. So now we can create a chart with this data. So I'm gonna hit insert recommended charts and I'm going to do a combo chart. I want a dual access chart that shows me on one axis how many units are expiring and on the other one how many dollars are expiring each month. So. Uh, the count of the unit types, so the count of, of how many units are expiring each month, I want that to be a line. And then the sum of rent falling off the rent roll each month, I want it to be a bar and we'll make that the secondary access. I'll click OK. I'm going to expand that a little bit. I'm going to, again, hide all of these field buttons. I'm going to right click on the key. I'm gonna format the legend and I want that at the bottom just so the chart widens out a bit. This is still, in my opinion, a little hard to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add data labels. I'm gonna format these data labels as well. Um, I want them to be in the center and I want them to be a currency. So currency with no decimal places. And we'll then make the text black, bold, and much bigger. And I'll also make the fill a lighter orange. There's some nice insights to be gained here. July and August, there's gonna be three leases lost in, in July, four leases lost in August, and then there's gonna be a ton of exposure in May of 2024 to the tune of six leases and nearly $7,000. The winter months, the coldest months, there's a little bit of exposure, one or two leases a month, but it's overall pretty manageable. Just like with move-in data, this information is a lot more compelling if you're looking at properties with more units. The more units there are, the better trends you're going to uncover. Again, this is only 27 units, so it's not offering as much, but I, I like what I'm seeing here. The bulk of the lease expirations happening in summer and spring months. So that's a wrap on the video. We pulled out all time sensitive information from the rent roll and looked for insightful trends via pivot table and charts. Properties with more units, are gonna offer you a lot more thoughtful analysis. For the sake of example, I created this 27 unit rent roll, but if you have more units, whether it's 50 or 100 or even 150, the trends are going to be a lot more prevalent. I plan to release one more rent roll video on a later date that's gonna cover concessions and ancillary income. If you've been enjoying Tactica's content, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and we'll see you next time. Take care.